Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at one of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming September of 2016 premiere auction. Meet Emma. This is Emma the Johnson light machine gun. Uh, Melvin Johnson gave all of his guns women's names. The uh, 1941 rifle was Daisy May. The machine gun was Emma. Now this isn't a standard model of 1941 Johnson machine gun. This is actually a model of 1945 e, or model of 1944 E1, also known as model of 1945. This is the final iteration of the Johnson light machine gun. So the 1941 Johnson light machine gun was reasonably successful. It was used by uh, U.S. paramarine troops, and they really liked it. But it had a number of deficiencies to it. Um, for one thing the bipod would sometimes interfere with the barrel changing mechanism. That led to bipods often being discarded, which was kind of a problem. Uh, the gun also wasn't quite as reliable as it could be. And so Johnson went back and in through 1943, the latter half of 1943, he was working on improving the gun because he was hoping he could make a big sale of them to the Army or the Marine Corps or both. Uh, he thought his machine gun really had no, no comparison in the U.S. ordnance uh, field and he really was kind of right. Um, this gun is substantially more practical and lighter than the BAR. It was uh, far lighter than the 1919 A6. It really was a, a type of gun that the US didn't have otherwise. It was more comparable to something like a British Bren gun. Anyway, in 1943 Melvin Johnson went back to the drawing board and made a bunch of, well, number of changes to the machine gun. Uh, these were based on recommendations from the guys who had actually been out there in the field using them, namely the U.S. Paramarines and the American and Canadian troops of the First Special Service Force, uh, who had used them in places like Anzio. And what he came up with was the model of 1944 gun. Now, the most obvious visible difference between this and the 41 is the bipod, which has changed to this kind of unique and interesting monopod. So that folds down, and then that folds down. And what you have here is kind of a, a half a clamshell style of monopod. And the idea is this can dig into the ground and it'll hold its position well. The grip here can double as a vertical front grip or when it's folded up, a horizontal front grip. And this doesn't get in the way of changing the barrel mechanism, which is an improvement. Now in December of 1943, uh, 10 of these 1944 pattern uh, machine guns were sent to Aberdeen Proving Grounds for testing. And weirdly, they actually kind of didn't do very well. Um, the, the Marine Corps did its own testing shortly thereafter and had much better success. In fact, the Marine Corps testing was so much more effective that Aberdeen actually went back and in March of 43 uh, did their own like repeat test, I'm sorry, March of 44, did their own follow-up test, which was better, but there were still some problems with the gun. It still needed help. Um, they tended to work fairly well in good conditions, but when you put them in adverse conditions, not so much. What? If you aren't familiar with the Johnson light machine gun, the model of 1941, I have another video out on that gun. So I'd, I'd, rather than get into all the mechanics here, go check out that video. And what you'll find is that the Johnson is a recoil operated gun, meaning that the barrel reciprocates backward every time you fire. What Johnson did in light of these 1944 tests was he actually added a gas assist to the recoil action, which is kind of a, an interesting and somewhat unique hybrid system. So there is actually a gas port in the barrel here and a sleeve, and the idea was that gas port would help push the barrel backwards, which would give it more oomph, more cycling power, and help it overcome things like sand or water or mud or dirt getting into the action. This final design was designated the 1944 E1, and also later on the model of 1945. And that's what we have here, is a 44 E1 or 45. Now this exact gun actually came out of the Winchester collection. There was a time a number of years ago when they sold some of their collection on the private market, and that's where this one came from. On this side, you'll see in a minute, it still has the, the Winchester collection tag on it. But, so with this improved system, uh, Johnson was able to convince the Marine Corps to do a more serious test, a 20,000 round endurance test on the gun. Um, the Marine Corps had all along liked this gun. In fact, the Marine Corps Equipment Board had recommended formal adoption of uh, the Johnson light machine gun to replace the BAR. Unfortunately for Johnson, that was actually turned down by the Marine Corps uh, administration because the Army hadn't adopted the gun 
the Marine Corps didn't want to go out on its own adopting a separate group of firearms from the Army, just not a logistically wise move. But the Marine Corps liked it, um, and they were always open to further possibilities with the Johnson light machine guns. So in 1945, they, they agreed to do this 20,000 round endurance test. Johnson makes 10 of the 1945 pattern guns, like this one, uh, send them to Marine Corps. Three of those went to Aberdeen Proving Grounds, specifically number 3047, number 3102, and number 3147. Well, this is gun number 3131, so it's right in the middle of those serial numbers. And honestly, I suspect this was in that batch of guns. Um, Aberdeen tried to do the endurance test on one of the guns. They ended up cutting it off at 13,190 rounds uh, when they had their final of, I believe, 13 parts breakages. So unfortunately, while they're good guns, they were very much liked by combat vets. They just didn't quite hold up in testing uh, well enough. Now, after this, Johnson went back to make some improvements. But at this point, this endurance test was held in, from July 20th through the beginning of August of 1945. And of course, by the end of that test, World War II is over. Um, there's no longer nearly, well, there's hardly any impetus left to do much, spend much money on arms development. And so the Johnson light machine gun, like so many other projects at the end of the war, basically had its funding cut off. Um, Aberdeen continued experimenting on the gun into uh, the, till the end of 1945, but it didn't end up going anywhere. All right, with the history in mind, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the details that are different on this 1945 pattern Johnson. All right, I'm gonna start with the rear sight here because it's the easiest one to get to. This rear sight's been beefed up substantially from the original Johnson light machine gun. You'll notice the adjustment knobs here for windage and elevation are a lot bigger. And you have an interesting setup here. Namely, this sight can either be stood up vertically or at this sort of 45 degree forward angle. And that's not including the stowage position there. Now, you've got this, which is your battle sight. So if you just want a quick and dirty basic battle sight, you flip this forward 45 degrees and use that sight, which is already provided at an angle for you. If you want a specific, uh, specific range aperture sight, then you flip this up vertically and set your range based on these gradations there up to 1,200 yards. So the sight's definitely an improvement on this gun. And I think this 45 forward thing is an interesting tweak. I've noticed on a lot of uh, guns with stand-up sights, the sight kind of tends to bounce forward under recoil anyway. And this may have been a way to get a, to, to solve that problem a bit by simply putting the sight right there in the first place. Now this later pattern Johnson also had an improved anti-bounce lever. This is in there to prevent the bolt from actually bouncing slightly open when it closes. Um, that's, that's an issue with the AR-15 as well to some extent in fully automatic mode. Um, and the AR-15 shares the same bolt head design as the Johnson. The early ones had a smaller lever. The 1945s had this larger one, although oftentimes you'll see them with a slightly redesigned receiver that actually covers this piece. Um, I suspect this one was simply made on an existing 1941 pattern receiver, and so it's got the enlarged lever, but it doesn't have the shroud over it. Now, the new buttstock is a pretty distinctive feature here. Uh, the original 1941 Johnsons had a wooden buttstock on them, and they went to this two steel tube, very heavy duty. These are covered with a uh, hard plastic or hard rubber so that your face doesn't uh, either melt to them or freeze to them, depending on the weather. And this actually, it, it's easier to disassemble and work with. The recoil spring is stored up here in the top, and you have this bottom uh, space for spare parts, cleaning kit, anything you need like that. In order to access that, there is a, uh, a little latch right here. You put the tip of a bullet in that and pull it down, and that unlatches the stock. Let's see if I can do it with my plastic punch. There we go. That opens up. Interestingly, in this one, we have some plastic fragments, and hiding in there as well is a spare extractor. There's a, a cool Christmas surprise for you in the buttstock of the Johnson. So this compartment is open and hollow for cleaning stuff. This holds your recoil spring, and I'm not going to take that out because it's just a, a spring. Now, the really distinctive element to this gun is this folding monopod. 
It replaced the bipod, of course, and it's got the same sort of covered plastic, I think that's plastic, not rubber, um, as the buttstock. This acts as your horizontal front handguard grip when you're uh, shooting the gun offhand, and the monopod foot folds up around the barrel here. So it actually kind of does double duty as a heat shield. It prevents you from putting your hand on this, which is probably going to get pretty hot when you're shooting. Now to actually use this as a monopod, you're going to unfold it. There's two springs. They're both pretty stiff. There we go. Now this will also function as a vertical front grip, although the reach to get to it is longer than I would like, personally. You've got this foot, semicircular foot, with sort of claw feet on it. This will definitely do a good job of digging into dirt or soft ground uh, to kind of fix the gun in place. It's not going to slide around so much uh, like a flat monopod foot. On the other hand, this is terrible for a hard surface. Putting this down on something like a, a roadway or concrete, like you, for example, might find at a shooting range, uh, not so great. But for actual combat conditions, better. Now, all maintenance or uh, manipulation of the Johnson is intended to be done with a cartridge. Uh, that's going to, of course, mar the gun up, so I'm going to use a plastic punch here. In order to get the barrel out, you have to depress this catch, this block, which is really pretty darn stiff. The idea with a cartridge is that you'd bring the nose in like this and just lever it down. Um, I can't really do that quite so well with a plastic punch, but there we go. Let's see if I can almost. Aha, okay, now, yeah, nope, I had it there for a minute, now I don't. There we go. All right, now I've got the barrel started and now it will come out. There we go. Now, where the original barrels just had a, a sleeve here to ride in the front of the receiver, this guy actually has a separate component. Now, this has these two machined rings that ride in the receiver, but the inside of this acts as a gas piston. So here are rings on this, and there is our little gas port. So when this is in the gun, this uh, bushing is locked in position here. So then when you fire it, you're going to get gas that comes out the port and fills up the space between here and this shoulder on the barrel, which is going to push the barrel backwards, just like that. That gives you a little bit of extra boost to overcome any sluggishness in the system, which may be caused by, say, the receiver being full of mud. So there's your field strip 1945 Johnson light machine gun. I think we can see why this was popular for all sorts of reasons. It's light. You pull the barrel out, and the thing is very compact and handy. And uh, the magazines are even beefier and more reliable and robust than those of the BAR. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. These are extremely rare guns. Very few of these were made, and very few of them got into uh, civilian hands. It's really cool. This one is fully transferable. So if you're the sort of person out there who'd really like to uh, own this yourself, try it out. Maybe you have a Johnson 1941 rifle that really needs a companion. Well, take a look at the uh, description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy. You can take a look at their pictures and uh, their description. And if you're so in the market, place a bid on the website or over the phone, or you can come up here to the auction house, check out the gun in person, and participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching.